Come on, I'm going to say it like the old folk. You said, we trying to get all of our ducks in a row before we move. And then after we moved, the ducks was in a row, but nothing happened. See, it's better to move on God's timing with your ducks out of line than to think you know more than God. Now look at 2 Corinthians 10, because I just said something important that every thought matters. Every thought matters. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 5. Notice what Paul said, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. This is what I want you to see. Bringing every thought, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Listen, bringing every thought into captivity. See, there are thoughts that enter the mind that need to be arrested. Needs to be dealt with. Watch this right then and there. You know the problem with a lot of us? Thoughts will enter our mind. And we'll say ignorant stuff like, I'm going to pray about that later. No. You know what I learned to do? Every thought that comes into my mind that is not of God, y'all better hear me. I'm going to arrest that thought right then. Right then. I can be driving. I got to put that thought on checkmate. I got to checkmate that thought. Why? It's not the right thought. It's not coming from God. It's not word based. And if you're not doing it, then you're not training your mind to deal with negative thoughts. Because they're going to come. I said they're going to come. Especially when you're going through trial. Negative thoughts are going to knock at the door. Come on. I didn't get enough amen. I should have got that. Negative thoughts are coming. But I'm wondering this morning how many of us deal with bad thoughts, thoughts that are not of God, immediately. Listen, and sometimes you are not in a place where you can pray out loud. How many know what I'm talking about? But I still have to arrest this thought. I still got to deal with this. I said, I still got to do it. That's the wonderful thing about God. God don't just hear us verbally. But you know, you can pray inwardly. I said, you can talk to God without a word coming out of your mouth. You can cast down thoughts. And nobody hears what you binding up. Nobody hears what you are resting that entered into your mind but you let that thought know not here you won't stay here you won't build the house here but see what we do is allow thoughts to build a nest in our mind listen to me why do you think some of you don't feel good about yourselves the way you need to don't you know that's something that has to do with your mind Some of you people can compliment you and it won't raise your level of, of feeling good about yourself. Even though that's not what you should be totally dependent on, but it's good to get confirmation sometimes. What my sister's at? Sister, is it not good sometimes? Don't you know you looking good for somebody else to confirm what you already knew? Is that not a good thing? But you check out people who battle low self-esteem, low self-worth. Those are thoughts. Those are thoughts that enter their mind telling them they're not good enough. Come on. And, and that's something serious. That's something that has to be dealt with. I 
said something has to be dealt with. How am I going to love everybody else, but I can't love me? How am I to feel good about you and what God doing in you and through you, but yet I don't feel good about what he doing in me and through me? How can this be? Those are thoughts. Now, I'm not saying we need to get to the point to where we think more highly of ourselves. Because we know that's not right. But you have to deal with thoughts that come to kill your purpose. Do you hear me? Thoughts sometimes come like snipers. Just shooting. Fiery darts that the enemy will throw, listen, at your heart, but your heart represents your mind. If God done told you he was going to do something and a thought enters into your mind that what God said is not going to happen, deal with that. Deal with that. Now, see, I'm so good at the word that most of the time I would not only deal with it in my own way of speaking, but I'm also going to deal with it according to the word. Which means I got a scripture for that. Which means I know Bible concerning that. Any thought that tells me that God don't want me to prosper. Oh no, nah, I'm dealing with that. I said I'm dealing with that. And learn to deal with it while bouncing checks. Yes, I did. While bouncing a check, I learned that I'm not going to always bounce them. There's coming a day where I write them and I write them big and they'll cash or they'll go through. I'm talking to somebody, but I had to deal with the thoughts that tried to tell me this is your life. But I said it can't be because he came. That. And have it how? And have it how? Checkmate on that thought. When you balance in your body, don't ever succumb to the ideal that you always going to be sick. You ain't never going to have energy to do what you desire to do. Oh, no. By his stripes. I'm already. No, Peter put it already. Peter put it in past tense. Come on. Peter looked at what Isaiah said, but Peter knew he already took the stripe. And so Peter said, this is past tense. By whose stripe we are already here. Checkmate. Come on. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper be in health even as your soul does prosper check I gotta move on y'all ain't getting it I said check that's when sometimes I don't listen to music when I'm driving because I want to deal with these thoughts want to be able to pray through want to be able to put my mind and meditate on the right things come on because a lot of what we listen to that they consider gospel music is not even glorifying the God whom we serve they playing that song in the club and in the church I need something that's going to arrest these thoughts I need something that's going to deal with negativity. I know I'm right. And, 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 and church folk get tricked all the time into thinking that what I'm teaching is a pastoral thing. Well, that's for pastors. No, this is for saints. This is for all of God's church. All of us, when we start maturing in God... One of the things that suggests you are mature is your ability to deal with negative thoughts. Because if you can't deal with thoughts coming into your mind that's not of God, that means you're immature. 
And just like babes in the natural, we don't expect them to do everything for themselves. Am I right about that? If you're expecting a two-year-old to get up and cook, something wrong with you. Mentally, you are. Come on. You expecting a two? Why you ain't eight? He too. You ain't fixing nothing. And you better be careful because what he'll eat may hurt him. Hey, one of my grandkids eating out my flower plants. Coming in with a handful. I'm like, boy, you. <laughs> and I know the flowers look good, boy, but come on. <laughs> he like it was good, too. He just had to have it. Now we laughing, but part of being mature is having the ability to do what you know your father told you to do. And don't get caught up like a whole lot of folks. Well, Pastor, you know, I'm trying to do it. Why are you trying to do what God told you to do? You don't try to do what God tells you to do. You, you do it. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Why are you trying to do that? When you get mature, you do what daddy say do. Daddy told me to put it down, and I put it down. Don't pray and ask God to do things that he told you to do. Come on. Come on. Look, look at Psalm 19. Are y'all hanging in here with me? Look at Psalm 19. See, just like that scripture Paul just said, bringing every thought into captivity. See, that's some things we got to do. Lord, get this out of my mind. No, you cast it down. You arrest that thought. You deal with that thought according as I have taught you. See, that's right. we don't just come to church just to say we came. Let us not be that church who is taught well, but you use none of it. 